So this guide is looking to be quite long, so I'm going to skip the intro. I hope you enjoy the guide. Diva's primary weapon, the WSIO, makes Diva Shua twin short-range rotating cannons, dealing up to 22 damage per blast, a 40% movement penalty, coupled with a short fall-off range starting at 10 meters, and infinite ammo. With most primary weapons in the game, there isn't anything too complex about the cannons. You'll be wanting to use them primarily for poke damage, and to combine them with other abilities for the quickest time to kill. The only unique piece of advice is a spy check for Sombras with our cannons, due to them having a widespread, being hit scan, and having infinite ammo. Diva's first ability, the Boosty Boy, provides D.Va a 118% speed buff with a duration up to 2 seconds and a cooldown of 4 seconds. A small piece of tech to get started off with is that you can sneak in a double melee by meleeing at the start of the boosters and anywhere afterwards which should also stop the boosters. With usage, you want to utilize the knockback from your boosters to displace main tanks posturing your frontline. Now he's created a lot of space. Now he's pushed up here, you guys have, kite, kite, have to get back a little bit. Your snipers don't have as much room, whereas if he's on the ground, your snipers can still use the shield and poke off the D.Va and, you know, no problem. Now Genji gets to walk up a lot, like everyone gets to take a lot of space. And you guys lost control of the platform. See, he's been zapping everyone, like he's probably up to like 40% of his primal now, which, and if you boop him up, doesn't happen. Secondly, you obviously want to obtain off angles on high grounds, but here's Sparlow explaining why the pressure indirectly exerted from your boosters is the same as peeling for your Reinhardt without even using Matrix. What would happen if you boostered right here and used your micro missiles, your primary fire, and started sandblasting the McCree and the Ana from above their head? There's the pressure. Do you see how, how obnoxious and scary that would be? So you're sandblasting the enemy team. So what is the enemy team gonna do? They're either gonna one, ignore you, and somebody's gonna die eventually. E even if you don't kill them by yourself, you're putting a ton of damage to the back lane. So your Ryan fire strikes and that gets a pick or your Ash lands a dynamite and gets a pick based off your damage, right? Either they ignore you and you get a butt ton of damage done and a butt ton of pressure or what? They pressure you out. Now stop, when they pressure you out, the Ryans are trading right here and they stop shooting your Ryan to shoot you. What does that mean for your Ryan? If the McCree stops shooting your Ryan and the Ana stops healing her Ryan and they turn to shoot you instead, what does that mean for your Ryan? Now your Ryan is under a lot less pressure. Hey, they have a Zarya, but their McCree is not helping. Their McCree is not shooting and our McCree is. Their Ana is not healing and our Ana is. So you basically make it a five versus like four or five versus three for a period of time. And the thing with D.Va is because you have so much HP and armor and you have boosters, you can booster in, put a lot of pressure, matrix yourself and then fly out again. And you're totally fine. You've had a little bit of ult charge. That's okay. Your supports will get that ult charge. You took a ton of pressure off of your Rhine and you did it by not just standing there and shooting Rhine shield. You have actually peeled for your Rhine by not shooting shield or matrixing cooldowns at all. All you did was stand in an angle and shoot the enemy team. Make a fire 18 missiles dealing a total of 126 damage with a cooldown of 8 seconds. This ability serves one purpose which is to deal as much burst damage as possible and here's that combo. Firstly, use the boosters to close the distance. Secondly, fire your cannons to add a bit of poke damage. Thirdly, fire your micro missiles when you're close to the target so that the projectiles hit in sync with the fusion cannons. Lastly, melee as soon as you land the 10 damage from your boosters. This should easily melt any squishy character in the game. One small thing up against Far Barrage, Reaper Blossom or McCree High Noon is that whilst your defense matrix, also fire out your micro missiles to kill the threat as fast as possible. Other than that, there's nothing very special about this part of our kit. Diva's third ability, 2 second transcendence, makes Diva activate a forward facing targeted array to catch and eliminate projectiles out of the air. It lasts 2 seconds with a 10 meter range and a cooldown of 1 second. Again, there's no real tech with Matrix other than to boost, shoot, and Matrix towards a target who may have CC abilities such as McCree or Honor so that they don't land free damage onto you. The first common use of Matrix is to use it selfishly when taking off angles, as mentioned prior with boosters, in order to apply more pressure for longer whilst taking less damage. The second common use of Matrix is to eat instances of projectile cleave damage such as Fire Strike, Damage or Warnade to peel for your frontline. This actually leads me nicely onto how you can more easily eat these projectiles especially on his nade, as Sparlow elaborates on here. If you're D.Va here in the blue square, and D.Va in the yellow square, why does the D.Va in the yellow square actually do a better job eating cooldowns and matrixing damage for her Ryan than the D.Va in the blue square? Yes, recently got it! You can see. Now they're in a choke anyway, if you're here or here, they're still in the choke. But when you're at an off angle, you can actually see 
what you want to eat. You can put the matrix directly on the Cree or junk. You can see the animation of the flashbang or the animation of the sleep or the animation of the nade better. You can see everything so much better when you're actually on an angle. So not only do you put more pressure, you can actually see when you need the matrix to peel for your rind significantly better. And, and, and that goes not just for peeling for your rind, that goes for peeling for your backline. You can see, oh no, here comes the Genji. He's trying to hide, right? Or here comes a Tracer. When you're at a different spot, it is easier to see because the enemy team is either trying to sneak up on them, right? Or it's just simply less visual clutter. Thirdly, try and not panic Matrix when a teammate is out of position, as Menor further explains here. In terms of Matrix management, it's just very important, again, to read the enemy movement so you don't just panic Matrix. So in this situation, is your Reinhardt under immediate threat? Not right now. Mm -hmm. He still maintains a pretty safe distance, and also you still have a target bubble. So you have a lot of resources to save him, and he's not into in immediate threat. Even now, he's, he's under a lot of pressure, but you still have a bubble. But now you've bubbled and you've exhausted all of your matrix before they even did anything. Like they didn't, the only one that really pressured was the break. Otherwise, they just kind of shot at you. And then now they have an opening to potentially just move all in if they wanted to. Especially since they, you guys called that they should have a graviton. So when you just exhaust all of your matrix here, either they just all in and kill you or they just grab you and they kill you. Lastly, an extremely important but simple concept in classical dive that's often not known. It's a stagger matrix after your Winston uses bubble, as showed by Spalo in this clip here. Matrix briefly on entry, in other words, the first initial like little burst of damage, you want to let your Winston use his bubble, zap, 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 and then full matrix after the bubble. Because here's the thing, the bubble is great protection. Use the bubble to recharge your matrix, and then once the, ma the bubble's down, you can keep going because you literally have two seconds of an un un vulnerability on the actual relevant damage, which is just Reaper. You want to stagger your defense of stuff it's like using immortality field and then using trans you don't want to use both at the same time you can't really matrix a bubble and you really don't need to matrix your monkey during bubble very much if your monkey's any good so using both at the same time is an inefficient use of resources diva's ultimate la bomb makes diva self-destruct the mech dealing up to a thousand damage in a 20 meter radius with a three second fuse in terms of tech and mechanics there's five main types of diva bomb that vary with how commonly they're used. The first is the angled bomb, which is boosting in the air at a 45 degree angle, then releasing the bomb when just over a quarter of your boosters have been used. This serves the purpose of zoning the area before engagement to provide map control and catching any squishies by surprise, with a common example being a Gibraltar attack on third point. I also highly recommend this workshop code, which was in Kaku's workshop for every hero video. Note that you can also skim your bombs across rooftops and angled surfaces, which decreases the amount of time the enemy have to react to the bomb and increase the likelihood that you catch a split off target. And also if you do bomb, you need like a little better placement because this this placement really isn't that good. Like it lands in a corner so it doesn't even split. You don't need kills, but you need to at least split someone. So if your team is pushing in, you can catch a target that is split up or at least force out an ultimate. But the way you put it in the corner, it's very easy for all of them to just fall back to that corner and shield it off. Slide it off corners here, you can slide it off corners there, just be a little more tricky. The second type is the nosedive bomb. Simply boost into the ground and immediately bomb, serving the purpose of bombing as quickly as possible by not spending your time using your boosters whilst minimizing how far the bomb travels. The third type is the air bomb. Simply boost vertically or at a slight lateral angle and detonate your bomb when roughly half your boosters have been depleted. This serves the purpose of zoning as much ground as possible, especially on carts. The fourth type is the stationary bomb, which I don't think I need to explain how to do. This mainly serves the purpose of remaking. The last niche type of bomb is the drop bomb. This is bombing at the edge of a high ground, then shuffling the bomb with your own hitbox off the edge, which should catch everybody within range and LOS of the bomb underneath the high ground. This is the most lethal bomb due to how unexpected it can be, and a great example of this would be on the airship on Watchpoint Gibraltar. An extremely important usage of Diva Bomb is in anticipation of a counter engage. This would be bombing after the enemy's Sombra EMPs, or after the enemy's RIOs is grab, as it zones the enemy away from dealing follow-up damage if your bomb is placed correctly. With tips surrounding bomb, try and use all your cooldowns to force out enemy cooldowns prior to bombing. This should increase the lethality of your bomb, whilst also being efficient with your cooldowns, as they'll be refreshed with a new mech. With bomb timing, here's Spano explaining a downside of bomb engaging early. Chat, what's the bad thing about bombing this? They're in a devolved fight, they're up two or three, like not just that you're wasting the bomb, the fight's already won, in fact, bombing here is worse than not bombing. No matrix. And why is that bad? It gives them a chance to clutch. Exactly. This son of a gun right here is 93% on Death Blossom. If he has Death Blossom right now, your entire team is dead. You give the Reaper an opportunity to clutch. You have no idea how incredibly lucky you were there. 
Bomb engages are okay, but your team has to understand that there's no matrix and you can play around it. As with any other offensive ultimate, such as Genji's Dragon Blade, you want to use it at engagements. This is because cooldowns are used, which means attention is drawn elsewhere from your bomb, therefore increasing the chance of your bomb getting value. Moving on to positioning and playstyle. Diva is such a versatile character that the way you play depends upon team comp, however there are some key concepts that should apply to any playstyle. The first is drawing and baiting aggression from the enemy team, as Mineral observes Choi Hoban doing against the spark. He's taken a lot of damage, but he gets the bubble, and then immediately when Choi sees it, he's moving forward. Because he moves forward, he's pulling the Discord, yeah. he's pulling the Lucio aggro, he's pulling the Zarya aggro, and this means that Violet has time to farm up his trance, he can save uh, Super. That's really good. Yeah, exactly. And immediately, as soon as he sees this, he, kn he knows, my job is done. Just, just by moving like this, I've done my job, they're gonna focus me, just make sure I don't take any more damage, or more than necessary. Secondly, here's Barlow explaining how timing your pressure and off angles with your boosters is vital. The timing of the pressure has to be good. You have to be timing your pressure for when the tank, the enemy team is actually engaging. Because if you just stand here early, like as they're pushing, as they're like getting through choke and you start shooting them, what are they gonna do? They're not gonna push through choke, they're just gonna sit there and shoot you, make you fly away, and then they're gonna push, and then, then you're gonna be screwed, right? The Ana uses all your cooldowns on your Rhine, and so you just go and kill the Ana for using all her cooldowns. Or, you know, the McCree is misposition and you threaten the McCree a lot. And McCree's like, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me! And everybody stops what they're doing to help the McCree, which means that your Rhine is under no pressure at all, right? Or it could just simply be in the Rhine versus Rhine trade, you're shooting from an angle, putting a lot of heavy pressure in the back line or even the back of the Rhine. Building on this concept even further to a Grandmaster or Scrim environment, his mineral illustrating what calls to make to take or regain off angles and high grounds convincingly. He sees you and he immediately says, give up top, give me bubble. So now it's he's gonna lose no HP, probably get a little bit of charge for his Aria and completely push you away and just win this trade really really hard and force you to boost out you know so again resourcefulness not not only asking for discord you know do you have bubble okay can you give it to me i'm gonna push the diva okay boom you know Th these mid fight calls are super important to kind of fight for map control thirdly something every diva can do in any team comp is scouting at the start of every team fight to see where the enemy paths here's mineral showing an instance of this on Li Jiang night market you can scout you can either either fly up and look or you can go towards the right side you can see the spawn from there and then you can call a little earlier for your team which way they're coming whether they're coming top whether they're coming main whether they're coming right side because then you guys can position yourselves accordingly and beat them to the corner fourthly his follow explaining why divas must prioritize pharmacy what is unique about pharmacy compared to other DPS in the game. Pharmacy is the epitome of an off angle DPS, but she can off angle from legitimately anywhere. Like she can go behind you, she can go above you, she can go to your far right, your far left. Like have you ever seen Overwatch League, like Volk Sky Industries first attack? They'll send Pharmacy all the way around spawn choke and start shooting them from behind. The reason Divas prioritize on Pharmacy is because she's going to be the most lethal off angle threat. She's going to be off angling 24 7. And lastly, moving on to frontline tank synergies. Diva Hog. This duo provides some damage mitigation and coverage of the low ground on high ground. However, both these characters are prone to taking unnecessary damage, alongside Sigma occasionally being the better pick simply because he has more types of utility, blowing the lines between main tank and off tank. Diva Zarya. This combo has extremely high utility, however there are no stuns and it may be harder to gain value from bubble compared to other options. Point control and objective pressure may also be harder to keep or apply due to the lack of a main tank. However, you can pull off the Graf Diva bomb combo in the majority of ranks successfully. Diva Reinhardt. This is maximized for Brawl and the ability to contest high grounds, hence this duo is especially powerful on maps such as Watchpoint and Gibraltar. You also have the potential to peel for your glass cannon backline. Diva Sigma. This is a more defensive version than Diva Ryan, with less frontline resources in exchange for extreme damage denial and high ground contest, alongside the ability to peel for your supports. However, the biggest counter would either be a double shield comp or a coordinated brawl comp, as there's either too much cover or too little frontline capability respectively. Diva Orisa. This duo is quite versatile, providing point pressure and high ground contest simultaneously. Diva can also peel if needed, and whilst not common, pull bomb can be performed. However, this is a slightly outdated duo due to double shield and Orisa hog, due to the numerous nerfs essentially forcing Orisa to play with two shields, or for her to play with the buffed hog. Diva Ball. As you have no shielding but high mobility, both tanks will be playing off angles or committing to a hard engage. This means a lack of point pressure, posturing, consistent cleave damage, and you may struggle to peel for your glass cannon type supports. Diva Winston, best for last. This way, you have some safety during your dive, alongside the versatility to posture and poke against both tanks better than Winston Ball, in case you want to play a slow dive with Arna Mercy, or a fast dive with Lucian Moira. Well that's it for the guide, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment, and if this video also helped to raise your IQ, be sure to share it with your friends to also raise theirs. The link to my Discord is down below in case you want to join, until next time. 
you Big boy with that big broom Big boy how I come through Big boy with that brand new Cause I'm killing it